So I've been dreading this stuff, the satanic panic. But we need to talk about it. Um, this is a place I really lived in. I grew up during the time when the satanic panic was a big deal. I believed that witches and magicians were real and they were evil and they were in cahoots with the devil and the antichrist. And this was terrifying to me. It was also really interesting and fascinating to me. My Catholic priest buddy, uh, Father Stephen, always tells me, you shouldn't think about the occult so much. It's not, it's not good for you. It's not healthy spiritually. To which I say, I'm not Catholic. Screw off, my friend. But I do love him. So I was terrified and fascinated by the idea of secret cabals of Satanists out, you know, killing babies, kidnapping people. And it's not like I was making it up. There was it was on the radio all the time. My dad in the car always like plugging into these Christian radio stations. They were talking about the horrible things that homosexuals did and the horrible things that cultists did. And having people on the radio that like, I had three babies, they were all killed by the Satanist coven that owned me. None of that ever happened. Now when I was young, I read everything at local libraries on occultism, Satanism, Satanism, trying to really be like, you know, like a good Christian. But I was interested in the enemy because if you're going to be a good Christian, then there should be an enemy, right? So you need to know your enemy. I read everything at the local libraries. And when I would get the chance to go to a university library, I'd be right there in the occult section right there digging into you know the the church of satan stuff all the old weird stuff that was really interesting to me and in fact the town i grew up in until i was eight years old according to my family i don't buy this at all now was a hot spot for satanic activities so every time we go back to our like old house it was a park across the street and i was convinced there were witches there. They were doing horrible things. And there were Satanists. And Elkhart was filled with it. It's kind of scary, though. I mean, when you really get to it, like, that made me afraid of things like German shepherds, because supposedly those were the animals that witches liked to kill. So then I got worried about everybody who owned a German shepherd. And then, like, I'd go by a Masonic Lodge driving, and there'd be an upside-down star, which is the Order of the Eastern Star. And I'd be like, that's a satanic place. And what did my family say? It may be. It may be. Let alone the fact that my grandmother was in the Order of the Eastern Star, and they didn't just say, uh, yeah, your grandma was part of that order. It's ridiculous. Anyway. What is the connection between actual worship of the devil and evil rituals and occultism? Well, there isn't one. There are really not anybody out there, trust me, I would have found them by now, who are worshiping a literal devil. There's some mentally ill, serial killer types, horrible human beings. They're not part of any groups like, oh, the devil made me do it. There is no group that is actually worshiping an evil God. It'd be interesting if there was one. Even Gardner, our Wicca formation guy, was asked once if he worshipped the devil. And he said, I don't believe in devils or a devil, so how could I worship one? Prominent figures in the Church of Satan, which is a fascinating organization, and the Satanic Temple state the same thing. Like, we just don't believe in God and we don't like Christianity. That's our whole thing. Wiccans are witchcraft people acknowledge that there are negative forces, but they don't worship them. They worship positive forces. When you get to things like the OTO and ceremonial magic, they will invoke demons as well as angels in the ritual practice. But that's all about mastery. Like, how can you control the angels if you can't control the demons? That's set. 
in all of these groups and all of these pagan or neo-pagan or OTO groups, there is an awareness of satanic ritual abuse and the narrative that there is a cabal, a wide group ruling everything that is small and influential of Satanists. And they joke about it. Man, if you hang out on OTO Lodge, you can try to play like bingo with with people joking about the occult and Satanism, and you would fill up your bingo card fast. It's such a ridiculous thing that doesn't exist, though so many people believe it exists, that people in these occult esoteric communities just joke about it all the time. Honestly, if there was an evil satanic underground, a pal of mine and I made this argument in college, we would have found it by now. I've been looking. It ain't there. But the narrative is real. And many occultists are very careful to not let people know about what they're doing on the weekends. Because this narrative of horrible, evil cults that kill children and are out to destroy the world, people believe that. If they hear you're associated with something that is not Christian, people lose jobs. People lose their lives. Even. I mean, we don't, they don't get killed here, but in other places they do. It's a sort of pervasive and perverse lore, this notion that Satanists are everywhere undermining everything and it allows someone to say, oh, that person's bad. They must be a Satanist. It's okay to kill them. And sadly, that does happen. It's dangerous. It's dangerous to occultists. So let me bring you to an intriguing point. This is Billy Graham. Billy Graham was the guy that um, did a crusade for Christ across the United States in the 60s and 70s. He was the one that brought my own family to Christianity. Billy Graham famously told Republican President Richard Nixon and other Republican leaders that the anti-war protesters and left-wing radicals were actually Satanists. With no data, there is no record of any satanic group doing anything that Billy Graham did, or Billy Graham said they did. So Billy Graham would report, allegedly, that there were colossal gatherings of anti-Christian Satanists and occultists and open devil worshippers that would happen in various places. When you look back through the journalism at the time, there's no record of anybody who was openly satanic doing this thing. But when you look at it and the very dates and places that Billy Graham said that uh, these Satanists are there, you would find correlated, maybe not surprisingly, anti-war protesters, left-wing protesters, and to no surprise, Jewish people. So the anti-war <laughs> left-wing sort of thing people do has traditionally been <laughs> filled up with many Jews. And you can sort of see, if you pay attention to accusations of Satanism are usually put upon people who are Jewish, which is an old argument that the Jewish outside identity <coughs> demonstrates that they are anti-Christian. So the more I think about it, you see that the devil is painted in the color of your opponent. Ironically, Satan, Zatanas, in the book of Job, my favorite book in the Old Testament, or as I call it, Hebrew Bible, is actually a lawyer or an advocate. He is God's opponent in a debate 
namely the debate that if God, if Job will still love God, even if God takes anything from him, which is fascinating. So consistently, we will see that Satan, the devil, whatever, he is put on the side of rationality and science, and God, the G, is put on the side of religion. So, my question is, what is all this devil rhetoric all about? And I would argue that it is about anti-rationality. It is against materiality. And the fear of the devil is about the fear of the outsider who might change your mind. So you better not get that person to change your mind. And if you haven't noticed, the whole like Q thing is completely satanic panic once again. So. <laughs> Sorry for a cough moment. Come on. All right, so there has been no data ever about satanic ritual abuse. This is a picture of Anton LaVey, the head of the Church of Satan, a guy who did nothing more than like to wear a crazy goatee, play the organ, and talk about Satan all the time. But what was he doing? He was just being against Christianity. So, in fact, that argument is correct. Satanism, Satanism is against Christianity. So, there was no data ever found by the FBI about satanic ritual abuse, which was said to be widespread by evangelicals across daycare systems across the country. No data was never proven. But it was talked about an awful lot. So there was this argument that there were all these like teachers who were aggressive, antinomian, and anti-cultural, which is interesting because at the same time, there was beginning to be a lot of awareness of child sexual abuse. And it was way easier to say, oh, done by cults rather than done by the uncle or the brother or the whatnot. So satanic ritual abuse is a bit of like a scapegoat for the fact that children are harmed all the time by their family members and their family's friends. And it's easier to say, oh, no, it's the Satanists out there rather than Uncle Jim, who's the scariest one. It's easier to decry Satanists rather than... Boy Scout leaders. Stranger danger was a thing that I grew up with. It's like, you got to be afraid of strangers. Be careful. But in reality, the real danger is in your own home. The real danger is in your own family. And in fact, the more we like play up that satanic ritual abuse by Satanists that molest children, the more we play that up, the more we hide the fact that you know, children are abused by their family members. We hide the reality of the matter by talking about arguments like Satanism. So this is an old story. And in fact, when you listen to people talk about Q and QAnon, it's so similar. So sensation, sensationalist arguments are made about groups of shady people doing act doing devil worship or used, I would argue, as an excuse to not address the actual dangers to children in our very world every day. All right, take a break.
Warlow. Let me wait a second. 